Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. So, when I was at home sick uh, for the last couple of days and before that as well, but anyway, I posted a video uh, on my channel letting you know that I would have a Q&A so that you can uh, write down your questions in the comments and also I posted a picture of this on my Instagram and asked you to ask me anything that you were wondering about. And I got a few questions, so without any further ado, let's look into them. I haven't really looked at them prior to filming this video, because I kind of wanted the answers to be as spontaneous as possible, so to say. So let's start with the questions I got on my YouTube uh, video. The first one, I have it on my phone, so if I'm looking down, you know why. So the first one is from Wendy Esther Loving 50 Hi, love. Hi honey, what do you do for a living? What is a day in your life like? Love, Wendy. So, what I do for a living, my role is called governance specialist. I work with a uh, pretty large credit card company here in Sweden and I work with operational risks and I work with compliance. So I support the both uh, functions within uh, the credit card company that I work on. So there are, it's very analytical, it's uh, somewhat system based, I am responsible for the system that we use to have all our risks written down, the controls, and operational risk is basically uh, every company, um, especially in the credit card market, needs to, ha needs to have um, an operational risk framework. Oh, well and risk framework, enterprise risk framework, but I'm currently working for the most with operational risks. Meaning things that are operational, like processes with people involved, systems and so forth, things that might go wrong in some way, that might cost money, that might affect customers, that might affect the reputation of the company and so forth. So we support the business to identify the risks, we support them to assess the risks and uh, implement valid controls and actions where needed. And also I support the function that works with compliance, meaning that we follow all the regulations that we have to follow within our uh, branch or line of work, so so to say. And besides that, I am a bit um, responsible for communication from our team. I'm responsible for reporting to the boards, um, like collecting all of the data that needs to go to the boards, holding all the strings, and securing that all the reports go out on time and so forth. So yeah, basically that's what I do for a living. And uh, it's a little bit complicated to understand sometimes, but that's like in the big picture what I work with. And I'm very content. I have worked in this company for eight years, but I have worked with operational risks for like three or four years now. And it really wasn't anything I thought I was going to work with, but I have, I've come to love it and think that it's very, it's very giving and it's, it's always changing. So you are never bored. There's. I don't have any days at work when I don't know what to do or have anything to plan for. So yeah, that's what I do for a living. And the other questions you had uh, was, what is a day in your life like? Well, it really, really depends on if it's like a regular day where I have to go to work or if it's a weekend. So if it is a regular day when I go to work, I wake up in the morning pretty early, like 5 a.m. early. I um, get dressed, I get my son dressed, I go up with the dog, uh, we go to kindergarten, I leave him at kindergarten, then I go to work, I work until like 4 o'clock-ish, and then I go home, usually buy some groceries on my way home uh, for dinner. I get home, my husband is already home with our son, he picks him up uh, earlier during the day. So then I start cooking. Uh, most of the times with my son, he's three years and he loves to help out, so we always cook together. So we cook dinner, then we all sit down as a family and eat dinner, and now the time is right about like six o'clock, and then we hang out in the sofa in the living room, talk about our days, and we, I play with my son, we read books or so, and then like at 7 a.m. he goes, or 7 p.m., 
7 p.m. sorry uh, I go and lay our son to bed for the night I take a shower and then I jump into bed and uh, we usually watch series me and my husband until like 9 or 10 p.m. when we shut down and uh, go to bed so that's basically like a regular day <laughs> in my life and uh, if it's a weekend it really depends on I usually try to uh, book in things to do during the weekend since our regular days like not weekends but like work days we don't really have time for anything else but to work and take care of the things in the house and eat and sleep and so forth and that could be like anything go to a museum go outside take a walk or eat somewhere meet family meet friends and yeah so it really depends on what we do for the weekends but the work days are usually the same all of them thank you for your questions wendy Next up is Louis Vuitton. Lovely, hi dear. And uh, she asks, what made you start loving Louis Vuitton? Well, I haven't been into the luxury brand for so long, actually only since like June, August of last year. So like a half a year or so. But I have always prior to that liked Louis Vuitton, mostly because I like the, I've always liked the Damier Band print. That, was, that has always been the one I've been gravitating uh, towards and I just always have thought that the, the pattern of the canvas is I would say it's fairly unique and it's the design isn't that like in your face so to say and I've always liked the, the way they design their bags their SLGs it's elegant it's classic it goes with anything and everything and anyone for that matter uh, so I have always been like fairly interested in them uh, for years before I started to actually like buying my first piece and collecting and so forth but I also love the history of course and um, yeah I think it's just their design basically obviously <laughs> uh, so I hope that was a good answer okay next question is from Need for Speedy. Hi. Hi, darling. Hope you get well soon. Thank you. My question is In very cold weather, does canvas on your LV bags get stiff? I never wear my bags below zero temperatures. I wonder if it's not good for the canvas. So, I live in Sweden and Stockholm. Our winters they are really really different from each other like one year it could be super duper cold the other year it could be super duper mild but for the last winters we haven't had that much of a cold but the winter that we have had or we are currently having but it's not really winter now but like by the end of last year like mid-december or so it was really cold we we got until like below like 17 minus 17 celsius and it was cold and i remember i brought out my petit noe when it was minus 16 degrees and yes the canvas got really really stiff it was like hard on stiff <laughs> and uh, so I tried not to like move the bag too much when I was out, uh, but as soon as I got in and it stayed on my desk at, at work like for a couple of minutes, it was warm again and it was like moving. But I have read that some people have had the unfortunate unlock that the canvas has cracked. Uh, they have like moved the, the bag in some way when it was stiff and cold and it cracked. So I guess that can happen. It hasn't happened to me, knock on wood, uh, but I've read that it can happen. So I don't think that, uh, I don't recommend using a, a canvas bag when it's that cold. I even brought my uh, my Speedy when I was in Norway, but I never took it out uh, because it was minus 20 there. So since my particular way got so stiff, I'm fairly afraid to use it outside when it's cold. So lesson learned, I will not bring my, uh, canvas bags outside when it's below I think it's okay when it's like minus 10 I don't think there was this it's not a problem when it's only that cold but when it goes below minus 10 then I think we have a problem hope that answered your question I would I would really be careful if I take them out in that cold weather 
So that was the questions I had on YouTube. So let's jump into the questions I have on Instagram. So first off is your sweet mom. Hi. Hi, if you will have to choose one LV piece to buy, which you will choose between second hand Speedy 25 or a brand new Mini Pochette Aviation? That was actually a very easy question to answer. I'm, I'm not a person that is like very into the, um, oh sorry, I have something in my, uh, like the printed um, canvases, like the limited editions. Not all, I wasn't drawn to the aviation. I think it looks pretty, they are gorgeous, but it's not for me, it's not for my use, it's not for my style or so. Uh, so I will definitely choose uh, the second-hand or the pre-loved uh, Speedy uh, 25 because I'm actually looking at a Speedy 25. I have a Speedy 35 at the moment, which I love. I love the size. It's great. But I would like to have a 25 in the monogram canvas. So super easy answer. I would definitely get the monogram, the Speedy 25. Even though I do like the mini pochette, but not the aviation version. version. I'm a little like matchy matchy person. I would have so much difficulties to match all the colors that are on the mini pochette aviation with anything like that I'm wearing, which is odd because I'm fairly colorful right now. But no, definitely the Speedy 25. So next question is from Heart My MJ. Hi, what was your first designer piece? Okay, my first designer piece was a Fendi bag. This was a couple of years ago, I will have to say like 10 years ago, and by the way, I'm 29. So it was, no, it wasn't 10 years ago, it was like 14 or 15 years ago. It was a Fendi bag, uh, one of the, oh my god, I don't know how it's called, but I'd insert a picture of it right here so you can see what bag it was. And I don't currently have it in my possession, I really enjoyed it, I loved it, I used it to death. And I would definitely repurchase that bag because it was a great bag. I think that it went great with everything. It was slouchy. It could fit a lot. It was like a great like day-to-day -day bag. Not if you go into work, if you have to bring a laptop, because that was definitely not fit in there. Uh, but that was my first designer piece, actually. And I got it from my mother, I think it was. Or we bought it somewhere together. I don't really remember. But that was like my first, first, first designer piece. Totally beautiful. I had her for years. So sad that I don't have it anymore. <clears throat> so yeah, that was the answer. Next question is from Arabella1. No, sorry, Abarella1 on Instagram. What is your favorite piece? Mm, I will have to guess that you're asking my favorite Louis Vuitton piece. And ooh, that is a like he very hard question to um, answer. Uh, I would have to answer in two ways. My favorite piece just for the looks of it and my favorite piece for the usage of it or like the versatile usage of it. My favorite piece for the looks of it is definitely still my Louis Vuitton Vernicle in the Pomme d'Amour color which I will insert a picture of. And my favorite piece functionality wise as of my collection right now is definitely my vintage Louis Vuitton Petit Noé which I will also insert a picture of and I love that piece so much it's a bag that you really can since you can carry it on your shoulder it's practical and it fits a lot more than you can think you can have you can have it like really small and petite as the Petit Noir, you can have it stuffed and filled to the brim of it and it still looks gorgeous and the design and the look of it, it's so original. So I would say those two are my favorite pieces. I'm so losing light now, it's getting dark in here now. Oh my god, let's do this. Uh, so next question is from the wonderful beauty and Lux and she asks, which SLG do you reach for the most and why? I would have to say that as of now it is my 6 key holder, my Epi 6 key holder and I will insert a picture of it as well. That piece is the one I'm using every day, all day, whenever I go, wherever I go. It's the 6 key holder. 
I totally get why that piece is the top on everybody's list and why that is the best starter piece if you're going to start with Louis Vuitton collections. Hands down, six key hold. That's the one I'm reaching for the most. Well, besides my uh, Louis Vuitton passport cover, which I use as a wallet, and I use my wallet almost every day. But if we don't think about the usage of the wallet, it's my six key holder, definitely. Next question is from Karen C. Karen dot C dot H. How do you choose a Lux uh, reseller to purchase from? Do you have things authenticated? That's a very good question. I'm just looking at the time. I have filmed for 15 minutes. This Q&A perhaps will have to be in two videos. I don't know. Let's see. Perhaps I will just have a very long one <laughs> or split it in two. We'll see. So, yes, I have purchased from uh, eBay three times now. I purchased my Petit Noé, Vintage Petit Noé from eBay. I purchased my six key holder and my Louis Vuitton passport. So the way I go about is I usually just search for the item that I'm interested in for the price that I have put in my head that this is the most I am prepared to pay for it, to pay for it because they're vintage and pre-loved pieces. And also I have, I have a picture in my head. Sorry, I've also bought my my Louis Vuitton Compagnie, um, it's like impossible for me to pronounce that, but it's a big makeup travel kit. And I also put in my head what is the condition of the piece I am willing to go for, which flaws I'm willing to have in that piece for the price I'm prepared to pay. And then I just stock eBay. I stock eBay, I browse it, and when I find a piece I'm fairly interested in, I always look into the seller what is the seller's uh, feedback how many feedbacks how many are positive how many are negative i always read through the negative uh, feedbacks just to be sure uh, why the feedback has been negative if it's like 20 negative that uh, that seller has sold fake louis vuitton pieces then i would definitely not buy from that seller I won't take that risk but I usually always browse the seller check it out and I am fairly good at authenticating uh, items by myself I've googled my ass off I've watched videos I've I've just learned from a whole lot of uh, like studying <laughs> Louis Vuitton that I could actually I uh, authenticate the pieces myself by the pictures that the seller posts and if there is a picture I'm missing or like something I'm missing from it I will ask for that picture before I, bu I buy the pieces uh, so no I have never authenticated my pieces from anybody else but I am 100% sure that my pieces are authentic just because there are spe there are specific uh, things to look at uh, for each piece for Louis Vuitton as a as a whole, as a whole, uh, to be able to authenticate it, and I feel fairly comfortable doing it myself. And uh, so far, knock on wood, uh, it has gone great for me. So that's the way I go about. It's really, it's really important to browse the sellers, look at them. How long have they been in business? How, how is the correlation between the positive and the negative feedback? What is the negative feedback? And just follow your gut because I remember I saw I followed a seller looked at the item and I mean they were great but there was something inside of me telling me that this item looked far too good for the age of it and there were several items from Louis Vuitton that they were like it was fair to it was just too good to be true so to say and yeah that was that was like like how do we call it a plus uh, like replicas they were good I mean they were good but if you don't know your Louis Vuitton you would never guess that they were fake uh, so yeah that was my question I feel fairly comfortable in authenticating them my by myself uh, and I always pay for PayPal that's another thing so next question is from bag underscore LV lover hi and the question is, how do you organize your handbags? Uh, I have been wanting to do uh, like a new video of what's in my bag. Um, but I used to use an organizer for my Speedy 35. But I, I noticed it that the corners on my Speedy 
were starting to get damaged because of the organizer within them. I bumped my bag into like things, places, people, and that started to rub off on the corners because the bag wasn't slouching, but it was like square because I do like my speedy like in its shape and not slouchy. Uh, but since I noticed the, uh, the, um, the, the, the wear and tear on the corners on the speedy, I took it out immediately and I'm not using that anymore. So what I use is simply my SLGs. I use my cosmetic pouch. I use other types of pouches to just store and organize my things. But I will definitely do a video about that uh, for that in, in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. Uh, okay, next question is from Mrs. LV Lover. If you had to have one handbag, which will it be and why? I would have to, if I say going from my current collection, I will have to say the Louis Vuitton uh, Petit Noé. Love that bag, as you can hear. And it's, I love my Speedy, don't get me wrong. But the problem with the Speedy is that it's only a handheld bag and it's a little hard for me to always have a handheld bag. So I will go with my Louis Vuitton Petit Noé Vintage. That bag definitely, I mean, dress. you can dress it up, you can dress it down, you can stuff her, you can have her as a little petit bag. She's great. But if it is a bag that I don't currently have in my possession, in my collection, is the one that has been on top of my wish list for the longest, and it's the Neverfull. Because I just think that the Neverfull in the MM size, in the Demi MM print, would fit my lifestyle perfectly. So that would be the bag.